How's it going, physical science? So this is our lab demo for ionic or covalent strength bonds lab that we did on Thursday. Uh, I'm making this video just for the people that are home so that they have data or in case that you weren't able to complete the lab, you have data that you can use for the conclusions and analysis of the lab. Um, so for this lab, you're gonna need a timer. You need four substances. In this case, we have sugar, which is a covalent bond, bonded compound. You have NaCl, which is a molecule, which is, ion or, uh, I'm sorry, sugar is covalent. Salt, NaCl, table salt, is ionic, which means it's a compound. And then we have an unknown A and an unknown B. We need to figure out what the strengths are, so which one is stronger. So we need to first test sugar and salt. And then we will compare the results from these two to our unknowns to determine what type of bonds the unknowns have, whether they're covalent or whether they are ionic. And to do that, we are going to have this set up. We have a Bunsen burner, which is hooked up to our gas, which is set up on the sink. We have a evaporating dish, which rests on our ring stand, our ring clamp, and our wire gauze. We are going to get this thing going in a second. Um, because of safety, I'm going to make sure I have some goggles on, and I'm going to put those on in a moment because we don't want anything to damage my eyes that can't recover on their own. So I will be back in a moment with some goggles, and we will get this thing going. All right, so now that I have my safety goggles on, I've got my mask on, I've got everything set up, we're ready to go ahead and run our test. Um, what you're going to first start to do, you're going to take your evaporating dish. You're going to take a small sample, just a little spoonful. It doesn't need to be much. And you're just going to pour it into your bowl like so. And you're going to let it sit in the middle. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to set this up on my wire gauze and my ring clamp. My timer is set to five minutes. If sugar does not melt in that five minutes, it's not going to melt in this setup. So you would just record um, that it is not melting, and then you can use that data to make your conclusions about if it's ionic or covalent down the road. Um, in this case, I've already told you that it's sugar is covalent, so you can compare it to your next two. So I am going to move these out of the way so that you have a better view of what's going on, get this Bunsen burner going, and then we'll run our test. So I'm going to turn the valve on. So I have gas running. I'm going to light my match. And now, I don't know if you can see that flame super well, but now I have a flame going. Um, if I look there, if you can't see it here, let me turn these lights off and maybe you can see the flame. So yeah, you can just barely make out this flame. This flame is the perfect flame we need for this. I am going to start my timer so that I can record when my sugar starts to melt. So after 30 seconds, we're still unmelted. It's still just a white powder. And when it starts to melt, I'll pick up the Chromebook so we can actually take a look at it. So at, at 346, we officially, that sugar, which is a covalent bond, is beginning to melt. So I'm going to take that off so we don't get any smoking because if you leave this on, it will start smoking very quickly. So I got my tongs. I pulled it off, and I will show you what it kind of looks like. 
If you see there, it's kind of syrupy. It's a sap-like. If you've ever had molasses before, it looks very consistent to that. You could also think it kind of looks like honey, but that's what we have for sugar. All right, so I just finished cleaning up our setup. Um, so we have salt, which is ionic compound, which is now um, up in our evaporation dish. And I've got my timer running down there, um, which I think you can see. I will let you know if what time we are done with this one um, in a moment. So I'm going to pause it and I'll let you know. So I have now ran the test for five minutes. The salt has not melted. If you do look in there, I'll use my tongue so you can get a better look where my hand's not in there. If you do look, the salt is still there in a powder form after five minutes. That means that ionic bonds are going to be stronger. Um, they're not going to melt in that in, with the heat source that we have. We can get it to melt, but at much, much, much higher temperatures. In there, there is some sugar that was left over and that melted. Um, but you have to be able to identify the difference between the two. So salt does not melt. After five minutes, it did not melt in our setup. All right, so I just reset the experiment. We're using unknown A this time. I've got my timer once again running for five minutes, and we'll see what happens. So at three minutes, unknown A has officially started to melt. Um, I will take it off so I can show you what it looks like here, but I'm gonna keep the, the clock, the timer running so we can get the entire thing to melt. So if we look right there, we're starting to get some browning of unknown A, but we can get that melted down a lot more. Oh, poop. I spilled it all over the place. All right, so I officially took the sample off, unknown A, I took it off. After, let's see, a minute 40, it was almost completely melted. In fact, it started to burn. So if you take a look there, you can see that most of the white powder has gone, and that's not because I spilled all of it, but a lot of it is starting to turn black. Um, when that happens with this particular substance, it really starts to smoke. So we want to make sure we pull that off as soon as possible to prevent too much smoke from building up in the classroom. Um, with this, as far as observations go, along with what it looks like, I kind of think it smells a lot like uh, roasting marshmallows, um, but that is just me. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run our, I'm going to clean this out. We're going to run our unknown B, and then we can get our results and we can look at which, which one we believe ion, or uh, sample or unknown A or unknown B is ionic or covalent. All right, so I just got it cleaned out. We've got Unknown B officially running. The timer has just started. Um, so in a couple minutes, we'll see if it melts or if it does not melt after five minutes. So I'm going to pause it and we'll come back and see what happens. All right. So I have just taken it off. It's been five minutes now and unknown B has not melted. So unknown B has stronger bonds and unknown A has weaker bonds. Um, so in case you're just wondering, um, unknown B is sodium bicarbonate, or also known as baking soda, and then unknown A is cornstarch, or a sugar, or a type of sugar. So that is not surprising that we got those results. So if we think back here quickly to make sure you have your data, um, sugar melted in about 30 seconds or so. If you go back to the, the, that se section of this video, you'll be able to see exactly what time that was. Um, NaCl or table salt did not melt after five minutes. Unknown A melted right around um, a time remaining on the timer, a minute and 50 seconds. So after about three minutes, it officially melted to where it was starting to burn. And then unknown B after five minutes did not melt. So if we think back to what I originally talked about, sugar was covalent and melted. Sodium was ionic. It did not melt. So what you need to think about, which one has stronger bonds? And that is the question. So I'm going to leave you here, get those conclusion and analysis questions done, and use this stuff for your data. Bye-bye.